Grace and peace be to you from God our Father and the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our meditation is based on the raising of the widow's son. You will see that you and I lack both motivation and ability to change our path to the grave, but that Jesus has the power to rouse you out of spiritual slumber and into eternal life. Again, as the Savior calls out to the boy sleeping in death, and he came and touched the bier and said, Young man, I say unto thee, arise. So far the text, let us pray. Lord Jesus, bless thy word, that we may trust in thee. Amen. Children, teenagers in particular, can be hard to motivate, especially in the morning. The effort to rouse them from sleep, get them going with their day, it might start out subtle enough. A gentle tap on the bedroom door, whimsical whisper, time to get up. But as the youth shows no sign of stirring, your voice begins to pick up in crescendo. Let's get moving. And the knocks in the wood increase in frequency and volume. Once awake, though, does not guarantee movement. Still lacking motivation, the parent must resort in some cases to physically carrying the child out of the house. Unless, of course, they're too big to carry. Children or not, you encounter plenty which keeps you from moving ahead. The frustration of whenever your work comes to a standstill, because you have to sit and wait for someone who has not or will not come through on their part. The uncertainty of when you're held hostage by someone else's indecision, and the more the more you try to help them figure it out, the more they dig in their heels. Or no indecision, they know the right thing to do, they simply refuse to. None of these situations get moving by a simple tap on the bedroom door, nor by banging furiously on anything nearby. Yet, we act as if this works. Why, I can't begin to imagine what happens inside the cabin of a combine when harvest comes to a dead halt because some vehicle is not where it's supposed to be when, in no essence, in essence no different than my banging on the steering wheel when trying to get from one visit to another in timely fashion and I'm stopped by yet one more train in Aberdeen. Or as Jesus encounters in our gospel lesson today, a traffic jam at the entrance to the city of Nain. By this point, Jesus has acquired an ever-growing crowd of followers watching his every move pressing in upon him with such curiosity, fervor, that on one occasion they pressed Jesus into the sea to the brink of drowning. Uh, this crowd, ever eager to get to the next location and hear what it is Jesus will have to say there, watch what wondrous signs he'll have to offer, ever at Jesus' heels, it's best to keep a crowd like this on the move. But right when they come nigh to the gate of the city, behold, out of nowhere, flows a steady stream of people headed the opposite direction, flowing out of the city's only narrow entrance. No way in. What's the hold up those behind Jesus would wonder, push and shove a bit to see what's going on, tap the horn, so to speak. Let's keep going. 
they can't. Or in their way is a traffic jam moving at snail's pace, which they can do nothing about. And wouldn't you know, the holdup is a child. At the center, a teenager who will not get up. A young man who can't because he's dead. Here in this lesson, we have a visual example of the real cause of everything which keeps you from moving forward. That which keeps you from doing what you know you should, sin. And the eventual roadblock each of us must face, regardless what motivation you have been able to muster up in life, death. As I'm sure you've come to know how any loss of life, all the more that of a child, has the power to bring the lives of everyone involved to a dead halt. As it would seem, the entire city of Maine, which gathers together to carry this young man who cannot get up, this young man too big for his mother to pick up, carry him from his room out of the house to a piece of ground no man is eager to get to see. Mourners weeping out loud as the young man is carried along to the steady beat of fists against the buyer, knocking on the wooden frame upon which his coffin is set but none of their knocks, none of their noise is able to wake this child. This is what Jesus and his entourage encounter. Behold, out of nowhere, a slow moving procession to the grave. Who could be frustrated with this? What can you do other than sit and wait? Why, I don't even find myself knocking, rushing this kind of movement along. But then again, this kind of hold up is one you and I know we can do nothing about. Jesus, though, he won't let this stop him. No, this is perfect opportunity to reveal how he has the power, not just to motivate the living to get up and go, but the dead. Using a far gentler approach than, than we parents who bang on the door to rouse those dead to the world, Jesus but touches the buyer, one tap of the wood, and kindly suggests that it is indeed about time for this boy to get up. Now, man, I say unto thee, arise. And he does. Sits back up and starts talking again. Talking? No, talking is still not moving this along. So Jesus, the, the only one not standing about watching in absolute shock, picks the boy up himself, gives him to his mother, and thus sets the entire crowd round about in the reverse direction. Now let's everybody go back home. In this mirror, Jesus reveals himself to be both Lord of life and conqueror of death. And since nothing can get in his way, the Savior who has and offers the power to overcome every obstacle in between. Jesus lacked no motivation. Up early each day at the crack of dawn to perform miracles upon request, uh, 
He attended to a lengthy list of competing demands ever shouted his way. He only seemed not to hear, as when he slept through a storm at sea, in order to reveal our inability to make life change to our demand, to make life revolve around yourself. He could, though, and did, brought all things in heaven and earth to a dead halt. When he called out and woke up disciples who couldn't keep their eyes open in Gethsemane, startling them from sleep with a shout, Rise, let us be going. The hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Thus began Jesus' slow march to the grave. A dead man walking to the steady beat of jeers and doubts of how he who could raise the dead couldn't save himself. But Jesus didn't come to save himself. He came to save you from sin, death, and hell. There on Golgotha, we, we see another widow lose her only son, but this time no tap on the wood could turn this course of events in reverse. Rather, it is from the wood of the cross that Jesus directs and empowers you to overcome everything which brings your life to a standstill. As Jesus tenderly invites the two who did remain to weep at his feet to get up and move on with the rest of the days given them to live under his grace, pointing to the young man by Mary's side, woman, behold thy son, and in turn to him, behold thy mother. In the end, too big for that mother to carry, Two others step up to take his limp form to a grave outside the city's gate. Where the body of Jesus slumbered in death. Experience the same close of the eyes your form will someday see. Just up until the moment his father called for him at the crack of dawn. Time to get up. Ever obedient child he was, he did. Sat back up. Started talking again as your eternal hope. He's still talking today. risen from the dead, and ascended on high as the Lord of your life and the conqueror of your death, Jesus now calls out to you for whom he suffered and died, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Calling you forth out of spiritual slumber up into the kingdom of heaven, through the forgiveness of sins. Into a kingdom where every loss you encounter finds eternal gain in him. Even the most bitter of losses, child, parent, sibling, spouse, he picks you up, drags you out of wherever you'd rather and sends you back to those you still do have. All by the gospel promise that those who sleep in him, though their bodies might rest in the earth, they live. They live just as surely as does he. It's a promise sealed in his blood, secured with the tomb he left empty. A promise with the power to carry you past that hurdle and any other hurdle so small in comparison.
for the heavenly goal yourself. Because the good news of Jesus' death and resurrection raises you from spiritual death, raises you from that lack of motivation deep within us all by drawing forth out of you an, an obedient child after all through faith in him, a, a new man entirely ready to finally hear and follow through on everything this God has to say. Now then is the time to get up and start talking yourself. Like the young man in our gospel lesson today who was sent back home to those God had given him by telling the rest of your town that the Jesus who has given you new life wants the same for them. For it's God's desire that they would hear Jesus knocking too calling out to them through you. Well, not by banging down their door, but through a gentle rap and a humble voice in echo of his. So when things seem to be dragging, and you just can't get yourself up and moving, turn to Jesus and find in him the motivation you lack, which means repentance and faith in his ability to overcome and accomplish that which is impossible for you and me. That for every time you do find yourself wide awake and listening, even this very moment worked in your heart by the power of his word this day here, you might gain confidence in his promise to waken you from death the final day. When our Father in heaven will send Jesus back with the shout of rise, have no doubt you will. Sit back up stand again in body incorruptible. Never to see sin nor death ever again. Now the peace that passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.